Hello and welcome back to your Lab 11 instructional video. This lab will introduce us to aired features, climates, and landforms. Since nearly 30% of the Earth's land surface is desert, arid land with minimal rainfall that supports only sparse vegetation and limited population, deserts have been portrayed as fascinating environments of adventure and exploration, from narratives such as that of Lawrence of Arabia to movies such as Star Wars. They may be hot, they may be cold. They may be regions of sand or vast areas of rock and gravel, but deserts are always dry. We classify our deserts based off of precipitation. We have three values that we identify them off of, being first, extremely arid, lands that have at least 12 months with zero rainfall, arid, having less than 250 millimeters, and semi-arid, which is between 250 and 500 millimeters of precipitation per year. You will utilize this diagram, this map on the bottom, that is depicting regions of aridity to answer questions one through three. We then get introduced to a climate graph. A climate graph is a graph of climate. Again, climate is at least 30 years of generalized information. So when we talk about climate change and how the climate is changing as scientists, we're not saying that today was different than yesterday. We're saying that by saying that there's climate change, that there's been 30 years of progressional change. So it's not just an overnight thing. Anyway, this is a climate graph of Death Valley. So as you can see, the red represents temperature, so we can see that during the winter months it's cooler and the summer it's warmer. And the blue represents precipitation in millimeters. So as you can see, in perhaps June, we're looking at maybe two millimeters of precipitation possible throughout the course of a year. Be sure to answer all of the questions here based off of the climate graph. Moving forward, Another thing that we can do is we can classify climates. So Koopen Climate Classification System is a very common one that's been used. It's not the best, but it's the one that is most widely used. It's actually, does, its initial design was based off of a couple different values, uh, which include precipitation, which include uh, average temperatures, and vegetation. So it's a system of letters, and so these instructions kind of explain it. I know that this is tilted on its side, but I'm going to use it this way anyway. Um, it's kind of like a build your own adventure. So, let me see if I can do it this way a little bit. So as an example, step one, we need to classify the main climate group. Is it A, tropical, B, dry, C, mesothermal, which is what we experience, mild winters, warm, hot summers, D, microthermal, which I think of, the, of Delaware where they actually get seasons and it gets very, very, very frigid and cold. E, polar, and H, highland. Then there's descriptions. Once you pick your first letter, then you say, well, if I, let's say as an example, uh, we said you know, we want to describe, using this classification, Santa Clarita, I would best agree with this, mild winters, warmer, hot summers. Perfect. So since I picked C, then my second letter, which identify this precipitation, I get to pick from these. Is it F, wet all year round? No. M, is it monsoonal precipitation, which means wet summers? No. Is it W, dry in the winter, rains in the summer? No. Is it S, dry in the summer, rains in the winter? Yes. So therefore, my first part of this would be a letter C. Then I would say it's an S. Then I move on to my last letter, which is down here. Step three. Since I picked a C, my third letter is based off of temperature. So then I would need to find out what my temperature variation is. Hot summers, warmest month is above 72 degrees Fahrenheit, or is it warm summers where the warmest month is below, cool summers. So if I had to guess off the top of my head, A seems most appropriate for Santa Clarita. Hot summers, warmest months are definitely above 72 degrees Fahrenheit. So if someone asked about the climate classification of Santa Clarita, we would say it's a CSA. Now, that's just using generalized information. For this activity, you're going to be able to use the information from Palmdale, California. So here you have been provided with a climate graph, the data that is used to make this, as well as the instructions on how to do it. So the best way to do this is to fill out all these answers. So when you're looking at this diagram, the normal means average. 
So this is the average low, average high, which is great, but this is what we mostly are asking for is the average daily, the average So if it says, you know, what is the average precipitation, we go, it's 1.23 inches in January, or it's 0.41 inches, or 0.14, so on and so forth. So the warmest month on average, so the normal average warmest month looking here, we can see that it's going to be in July. It's the normal daily average of 90, uh, sorry, 80.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you've completed that, you move on to here where we start looking at some of the features that are often found in arid environments, alluvial fans and bajadas. Then you move down here and where you actually have the list of names and you have the definition of the sign, go ahead and match those. Then we get down here to one of my favorite areas is learning about sand dune development. There are additional videos posted on Canvas to explain this, but we find that the material moves in one of three ways, saltation, suspension, and creep. We find that all material blown by wind, 50% of it is saltation, suspension, and creep seem to be about split at 25% each. Here's a diagram explaining that, and there are additional videos within the modules. Your job here is to use your smart device, dumb device, textbook, whatever you've got, we're going to look at these six primary dunes. You're going to identify them and then explain their identification. As you see, some of them have one direction of flow. Some have more than one. Some have very distinct shapes. Some have distinct patterns. So as an example, we'll do letter A together. A is a Barkan dune, B-A-R-C-H-A-N. It is a classic crescent-shaped dune. Wind is blowing in one direction and the horns are facing the same direction in which the wind is going. So you'll have a definition for like for all six of these to fit within these letters. Then we move down here to kind of a wrapping it up type of situation. Here's a classic diagram using all the vocab found throughout the lab. Go ahead and plug in what you think each one of these is and then be sure to identify them with a description. After you complete that, don't forget to submit this as a PDF, and have a great week. We'll talk soon.